When we run this on the pre-trained model, you can see that it runs for a while. It runs faster than the training runs because it's not doing back propagation. It's just doing the forward passes, it's just doing inference. And you can see it shows what the loss is, which is down between minus 0.8 and minus 0.9, closer to minus 0.9, so that's quite good. In this case, for hinge loss, as we'll describe later, the very best it could possibly do is a minus one, so that's getting quite good. And we see an accuracy that shows around 96%, so an error of around 4%. So out of every 100 guesses, we get four of them wrong. Not great, not terrible. It's not really a contender for any of the top performing methods on the MNIST digits leaderboard that we saw earlier. Then again, we haven't tried very hard yet. We haven't tweaked our parameters. We haven't done any hyperparameter optimization. We're using just two convolution layers. We're only using 16 kernels per layer. These are relatively small. Um, there are a lot of tricks still up our sleeves. This is not an attempt to overtake any of those records. This is just a minimal example, firing up the go-kart, get it running down the road, so that then we can supercharge it later for fun, but we start by really understanding down to the nut and the bolt what it's doing and how it works. In the spirit of understanding our neural network down to the nut and the bolt, it's helpful to do some additional reporting some additional visualization to understand what's going on. So for this, we have a separate report script. This one, we're gonna do some plotting. So we import PyPlot and patches, the ability to draw patches in a plot. NumPy, of course, for everything. We get our testing data in. We bring in a Cottonwood tool called Visualize Structure that creates the structure that we've been referring to. And then um, we use our load structure again to be able to pull it in. And then a toolbox, TV, that we're going to use to create a text summarization of the structure as well. The very first thing I do is switch back end to AGG. This is a nice general matplotlib backend that tends to work almost everywhere for saving images to files, which is what we're gonna do. We're after maximum portability with this option. In this script, we're gonna create uh, images showing some correct examples and some incorrect examples. We get to specify the number we want to show. There will be six per plot. And so I just arbitrarily chose 36 of each to show. So we calculate how many plots that will end up being. If we chose a number of exam examples that was not divisible by six, we round up to the nearest six. And then we start describing the, this plot. So we give it a height of nine inches, a width of 16 inches, and we start specifying the positions of various parts. I won't go through every bit of the vis visualization code here to describe what each line does, but I'll describe at a high level what each chunk does. So these parameters here through this section specify the layout, how big each piece is and where it sits relative to other pieces. I like having this up at the top of the script because again, as I'm developing, this is the part that I'm, I'm tweaking. I run it, I don't quite like something, I adjust one of those numbers a little bit, I run it again, they're all right here and I don't have to hunt for them. We choose a background cover of ivory, it's a little bit warmer than white and we specify to drop these reports because there could be quite a few plots. We'll give it its own directory called examples and we make sure to create that if it doesn't already exist. And then load the structure, render these results, pull these examples out and create these plots. Summarize, create a text summarization of all these results and then create our structure diagram. 